You are listening to a sermon from Village Baptist Church in Petaluma. For more sermons like this one, please visit our website at villagebaptisthome.org. Our mission is to win people to Christ and develop them into active disciples. We pray this sermon is a blessing to you. Now let's hear today's message. Good morning, church. Uh, We are thankful to the Lord. We're grateful to our Savior for where we are today. And I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I want to say thanks to everyone, those I have seen on Zoom, and those that I have not seen on Zoom, especially uh, uh, people like uh, Sister Georgia Wade that also sends me uh, notes. Uh, We appreciate you. We thank you. Uh, We honor the Lord today. Um, We're going to continue with our series on the attributes of God. And I would like to bring you up to date on what we have done so far. I remember we started with uh, God is transcendent, meaning that God is higher above all. God is mighty. God is uh, beyond us. Uh, And then uh, we talked about God is imminent. That is, God is uh, close by. The immanency of God means that God is close by us. He is far, but he's near. He's here, and we can uh, speak with him. We can experience him. Not only that, we went to talk about the omnipotency of God, that God is omnipotent. God is all-powerful. Then we talk about God being omniscient. God knows everything. And then we talk about God being omnipresent, that he is everywhere at the same time. That led us into talking about the holiness of God, that God is holy. And last week, we started talking about God is righteous and God is just. We dealt with the righteousness of God last week. Today, we are going to deal with the justice of God, that God is a just God, and that he is the ultimate judge of everything. So let us look together as we do this, and I would like to uh, say to you that the gospel that uh, we are preaching uh, conveys these attributes to us. And God is holy, and God is righteous. His justice is pure and holy. Ultimate judgment belongs to our mighty God. We're going to talk about this a little bit, but I just want you to think about it. Think about this. Aren't you glad that you're judged only by God? Ultimate judgment belongs to God. Because he is a just God. He, because he is righteous and is holy, his judgment is right and pure. Man cannot be a just God. I mean, man cannot be a just judge. If, you, if we depend on the judgment of man, many of us will not make it. In fact, I probably would say 99% of us will not make it. The only percent, the only 1% that's going to make it is the one who is judging. Uh, Man is so bad. Uh, Man is, according to the Bible and according to traditional Christian theology, man is totally depraved. Totally depraved means that the depravity of man affects all of his being. It affects his intellect, it affects his emotion, and it affects his will. So when the intellect is affected and the will is affected, they're no longer perfect. And man is imperfect because man is imperfect, because man is depraved, his justice is imperfect. His justice 
is imperfect. Man's judgment is based on his nature, and his nature is imperfect. And because the, the doctrine of the fall, if you read the book of Genesis, especially chapters 1 through 5, you're going to get it without any doubt that man was created in the image of God. Man was created perfect, but man fell from that because he disobeyed God. He went away from God. He went away from the law of God. He went away from the will of God and started doing his own thing. And because of this, man has gone way out of the way, and only Jesus can bring us back. And we'll talk about that too as we talk about this uh, doctrine of the justice of God. The doctrine of the total depravity of man shows that man can never have a perfect system of anything. And, and in order to understand the justice of God, you really have to understand the justice of man. In order to understand the justice of God, you have to understand the justice of man because they are diametrically opposed. They are on, on different spectrum of the pendulum. One is right, one is wrong. One is perfect, one is imperfect. One is righteous, the other is unrighteous. One is holy, the other is unholy. And on and on and on and on. Take, for example, Lady Justice. Lady Justice is supposed to be blind. In fact, Lady Justice is used around the globe, even in Nigeria, where I grew up in Lagos. When you go to race course and you get close to where the Department of Justice, the Justice Building is in Nigeria, you will see Lady Justice with the sword and the measurement or whatever she has in her hand, and then you have the blindfold. They're supposed to be blind. Lady Justice's blindness actually is a problem. Okay, they portray her as blind, as she does not show partiality, uh, but that is a lie. That's a lie. The law is written in black and white, but faulty and corrupt men and women interpret the law. The law of man is written in black and white. If we just go by the law that is written down, then it will be probably fair justice for everybody. But this law that is written has to be interpreted by the people we call lawyers and judges. And because they are imperfect, because they are depraved men and women, it's impossible for them to interpret it correctly. Why did I say that? Uh, When you look at today, you hear that we have conservative judges and liberal judges. Does that tell you anything? It should tell you right away. You should just have a judge. It shouldn't be a conservative judge or a liberal judge. It should be a judge. And the reason why that is, is because our interpretation of the law are never going to be the same. And that is why sometimes, too, our interpretation of the Bible is faulty. Because you have two, three, or four sides, two different opinions on the same word that is written. So, let's look at what just happened to most of us heard about it. If you didn't follow it, I don't know if you were in America, but if you're in America, even though people around the world all follow this, uh, the trial and the impeachment of Donald J. Trump, the 45th president of the United States, he was impeached by the House. And because the Constitution of the United States says that the Senate has to try him in order for him to be acquitted or found guilty. Okay. The House voted to impeach him. It was bipartisan 
in the sense that some of the people in his party, the Republican Party, joined the people on the opposing party, the Democratic Party, to convict him, I mean to uh, impeach him. So you had about 10 Republicans that joined all of the Democrats to vote to uh, uh, impeach him. Now it got to the Senate. The rules in the Senate, the rules are different. But one of the things that has to happen in the Senate is that 67 of the senators out of 100 has to vote to convict him. They have to vote him guilty in order for him to be guilty. Unfortunately, 57 voted to convict him and 43 voted to acquit him. In other words, 57 said he is guilty. 43 says he is not guilty. But guess who won? The 43. That's already an imperfect judge judgment. Because if the majority says he is guilty, then he is guilty. But in the laws of the Senate, which is man-made, they said, well, there has to be 67 for him to be guilty. If a person is guilty, they're guilty. You're not half guilty. You're not a quarter guilty. If you're guilty, you're guilty. Just think about it. How many of us will love that kind of law for you when, when, uh, when, when you're speeding on the road and a policeman stops you? You have to say, wait a minute. You have to have three policemen that have to attest to the fact that I was speeding. If you don't have three policemen and it's only one, I cannot be found guilty. That was exactly what happened. So look at, that's the justice of man. You think about it. How many criminals will get away if we just devise a similar rule for thieves and murderers and other criminals? Our justice is made for rich and the powerful. The rich and the powerful, they are never guilty. Unless they were caught in the act and there was a, a video recording. Well, that's not true because with this one that just happened, we have video recordings, Boku video recordings. They still didn't find him guilty. Our system is imperfect. Even in ordinary activities of our lives, many of us have experienced injustices in one way or another. Now, you would think that justice, right action, right decisions, is going to be a little bit different with Christians, but that's not true. Let me give you one example. I have many in my life, but let me give you just one example that shows to you that the way we are judged are different because man is the one doing the judging. When I was at the seminary, one of the classes that I loved the most uh, was my preaching class. I loved the professor, Professor Dr. J.P. Allen. Dr. J.P. Allen was from somewhere in Kentucky or Texas, and uh, he was a good teacher. In fact, he told me one day, he said, your pastor in Nigeria used to be my Greek teacher when I was in seminary. That is Dr. E.A. Downsey, who was the pastor of the church when I started going to church at First Baptist Church, Lagos. Now, this man uh, was a good teacher. There's no doubt about it. He, he was one of those at the seminary. Now, at the seminary, there were some teachers that should not have been teaching. But they got that teaching position for some reason. I don't know how, but they got it anyway. But there were some really great teachers that I can never forget in my life at the seminary. J.P. Allen was one of those teachers. Very good, very meticulous in his preparation and his delivery of the, of the teaching on preaching. Why not? That is the reason why I was at the seminary anyway, because I've been called to preach and I want to be prepared well. Now, 
Because it was a class, you have to take tests. You have to uh, do some things. You have to write papers. You have to write uh, someone outlines. You have to do someone preparation. You have to do a lot of things that you're going to submit that's going to be part of the grade that you get at the end of the semester. And I did very well in my classes. In fact, you have to preach. You have to, you have to be taped. And your fellow classmates, I don't know how many of them, I think about three of them, have to watch the video and they have to give you the feedback. After you preached in class and the class gave you feedback, you have to choose about three who will watch a private video and give you feedback on it. I was blessed by God to receive good reports from all of this. And the final exam was a breeze. At least to me, it was. Until I got my grade. And when I got my grade, my grade was a B minus. And I looked at that grade and I got really furious. I got really mad. And I went to Dr. J.P. Allen's office. I said, Dr. Allen, there's a problem. He said, what is it? I said, I don't know what happened, but I got a B minus from your class. He said, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Emmanuel, I remember. I, I think, yeah, I think you got a B minus. I said, could you tell me why? <laughs> he looked at me and he said, what do you mean? I said, well, I, I have all my papers from your class. I did all my tests. I did all my evaluations and everything unless I just went to Flunker's Field on the final exam, and I don't have the result of that. Can you show me that result? He said, oh, no, that belongs to the professor. It's no longer uh, something I can give to you. I said, well, then you have to explain why I got a B minus. He said, well, Emmanuel, let me tell you something. In our class, there is a policy at Golden Gate Seminary that only about three or five in the class can get A. And after that, the rest of the people in the class have to be given grades that are below that. I said, well, I'm the, I'm the first person on your list in your class. Every time you call the role in class, you call me first. So you should treat my paper first. If I got an A, then I, the A should start with me. And he looked at me and said, well, if you're not, if you're not satisfied with it, you can, you can go and complain about it. Well. To make a long story a little bit longer, I knew uh, the academic dean. He was my history professor. I have graded for him. And so I went to Dr. Uh, Patterson, and I said, this is what happened. I showed him all my papers. And uh, I said, the thing that bothers me is that even if, according to your policy, that only a handful of people can get A from the class, I should be one of those because I come top, on top of his class in the register. Dr. Patterson looked at me and said, we don't have such policy in the school. Everybody that get A should get A. Anyone that get B should get B. Anyone that get F should get F. There is no policy like that. I said, well, that's what just Dr. J.P. Allen told me. He said, well, let me, let me deal with that. So leave your papers with me. As I was coming out of Dean's office, here comes Dr. J.P. Allen. I think he was following me. He was watching where I was going. And immediately I came out of the Dean's office and said, Emmanuel, I'm so sorry. I discovered I found my mistake. And uh, your grade is going to be changed. He later changed it to A. Now, why would I be so concerned about grades? You say, well, pastor, you passed anyway, so why are you concerned? Well, I was concerned because I wanted to do a PhD or do a doctorate, some kind of doctorate, and there is no way you're going to be accepted into a doctoral program if you don't have the grades. But the thing is this. This man that I respected so much, a great teacher, he knew his subject very well, he knew what he was doing, was still, well, don't let me call him a racist, but at least 
He had no judgment at all. He was not just. He administered those grades based on the people he liked and the people he didn't like or the people he thought should get this and the people should not get it. Not based on merits. So I'm not impressed by anybody that came out of Golden Gate Seminary and said, I came out with an A. It doesn't matter. Because sometimes your A really probably should have been a C or C minus. But somebody gave it to you. So this is the point. Is when I'm dealing with man, I know that man's justice is corrupt. Man's justice is depraved. Man's justice is not the right kind of justice. Even in public, we see it. Look at black people in the United States of America. And uh, we can talk about other countries too. But in the United States of America, the ju- lady justice is not blind. He looks at your color. Hello? In America, lady justice looks at your color. If you bad, if you're black, you're bad according to justice system in America. If you're white, you're cool, according to the justice system of America. It is a corrupt system. It's not blind. It's not colorblind. It's actually color active. You remember the name George Floyd? Just Floyd went into a store to buy something, and apparently a $20 bill that he gave was a fake dollar bill. According to the client, they found out how somebody was fake. Okay? That clerk unfortunately called the police to come. And immediately, the police saw it was a black person. They started their injustice right there. Right there. You have white people who devise schemes to rip people off in real estate. Millions and millions of people. You have white people who devise schemes to rip people off of their retirement income and savings. And all they get is a slap. You all know this story, and I don't have to go into it because we don't have time to go into it. But man's justice is corrupt. American justice is corrupt. They killed George Floyd for apparently a $20 bill that they thought was fake or Maybe it was fake. No life should be taken for $25. $20. If you're white, you get away with it in American justice. And I go on and on and on and on. We had a member of our church with a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, that was recruited to teach in a Christian high school. To be counselor in a Christian high school who was laid off because of the Depraved administrators in the school. No justice. No justice at all. Thank God that he is the ultimate judge. The only true just person.
person in the world is our God Almighty, the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Divine justice is trustworthy because God is holy, God is pure, God is righteous, and God is just. Let's look at this quickly. We know that God's justice is impartial. God's justice is impartial. Acts chapter 10, verse 34. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism. Amen. God does not forgive your sin because you're white, because you're black, because you're Asian, because you're Native American. No, God forgives you because you ask him for forgiveness and you're truly repentant, repentant of, your, of, your, of your sin. Let's read again Romans chapter 2, verses 6 and 11. God will repay each person according to what they have done. For God does not show favoritism. That is the God we serve. He is impartial. He doesn't give you something because you're tall. He doesn't give you something because you're short. He doesn't give you something because you're slim. He doesn't give you something because you're fat. He doesn't give you that. No, he gives you everything based on his justice, based on his righteousness, based on his holiness, based on his mercy, based on his generosity. Not because of who you are. We look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 17. Since you call on a father who judges each person, each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. So because we have a just God who is impartial, you should live your life knowing that God is going to judge you based on what you have done, not based on what somebody told him. He is very impartial in his judgment. We also know that God is just. You look at Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 17. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 17. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who shows no what? No partiality and accepts no bribes. Amen. Guess what? God doesn't need your money. God doesn't need you to uh, praise him and Put accolades on him because you want something. I remember going through the border of Nigeria and the Republic of Benin uh, a few years ago. And uh, the people who were with us were talking about how difficult it has been lately to go through that border. And, and, and they were talking, talking, and, and I just heard them about how much they were going to give to the police and the Custom officers, I said, no, don't give, don't, don't give them any money on our behalf. We have nothing to hide. Our passports are in order. Our visas are in order. And we're not carrying any drugs with us or anything like that. We're not carrying anything that they're going to uh, uh, stop us for. But it's Nigeria. They said, well, we have to bribe. No, I said, no. If you want to bribe them, use your money, use your money. But I ain't giving you nothing to bribe anybody with. God does not need your money. God does not need a bribe from you because he accepts no bribes. He shows no partiality in his judgment. He is just. Let's look again at Deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 4. He is the rock. His works are perfect. And all his ways are just. A faithful God who does no wrong, upright, and just is he. You cannot compare him to man. God is just in everything he does, and that is why 
if God places something on you, you should not be asking yourself, why me? Because God, God has a reason for everything. His reasoning is perfect. His ways are perfect. Everything he does, everything he does, they are perfect. Second Chronicles chapter 19, verse 7. Now let the fear of the Lord be on you. Judge carefully. For with the Lord our God, there is no injustice or partiality or bribery. So not only is God holy, righteous, and just, we are seeing that if you read the book of Job, you see what happens to Job from the time he had the calamity in his life, the time he was talking to his friends, and they were trying to advise him or say something, give him some wisdom or whatever from the Lord. They all, some of them messed it up and everything. But Job, after all of this, still trusted in God because he knew he served a God of justice, a God of righteousness, a God of holiness. Even if he slay me, yet will I praise him. We serve a mighty God. And lastly, God is true, and he is the ultimate judge of everything. Psalm 51 verse 4, against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Let me say this. Sometimes people in our families, Sometimes people in our churches, sometimes people in our schools, they will judge you wrongly. But I want you to have this and believe this and know this. Only the judgment of God counts. Only the judgment of God counts. And I know, according to the message of the Bible, according to how God has dealt with his people, according to how God has dealt even with you, if you are true with yourself, you know God is right in his verdict. And he is justified when he judges us. Also in Psalm 67, verse 4, May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. And then in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 26, many seek an audience with a ruler, but it is from the Lord that one gets justice. Don't look around you and try to get people's approval you can get people's approval, but if God does not approve you, you are not approved. If people judge you and God does not judge you, you are not judged. If people disapprove what you're doing and God approves what you're doing, you are okay. In fact, you are more than okay. Many of us want people in authority, people in power, people in judge. In, in, in sitting in judgment to approve us. We look into the wrong people. We should always look to God, for God is a just God. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 17. You remember that passage in Ecclesiastes? Talks about a time for this and a time for that. And the Koheleth said, I said to myself, God will bring into judgment both the righteous and the wicked, for there will be a time for every activity, a time to judge every deed. God is the ultimate judge. Now, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14, for God will bring every deed into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil. Let me read one more passage for you. And then I want to say something that is really important and is very important. And we need to pay attention to it. Jeremiah chapter 9, verse 24 says, 
But let the one who boasts boast about this, that they have the understanding to know me, God, that I am the Lord, who exercises kindness, justice, righteousness on the earth, for in this I delight, declares the Lord. We all live in America, in Canada, in Africa, wherever you're living in. You may want people around you to approve you. You may want people around you to think because you're going to church, you're okay. But recognize this. Only God's justice counts. Only God's judgment counts. Remember Joseph said to his brothers, I knew what your plans were. You went through it. But as for you, you meant evil against me. But God has meant it for good to bring it about that all of God's people should be kept alive as they are today. You can do whatever you want, but only what God wants counts. Man proposes, God disposes. So it's important for us to know this. If you're living your life right now, you have not given your life to Christ. That is the reason why he came, because we were separated from God because of our sins. Even if you did not do anything Uh, drastically wrong, you're still a sinner separated from God. And until you ask him for forgiveness to impart to you the righteousness of Christ, because Christ died on the cross for your sins, uh, the just for the unjust, Christ paid the price on Calvary so that you may have peace with God. Christ died and he said, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will get that ultimate justice, ultimate impartation of justice and righteousness from Christ, the living King. Put your faith in God because he is the only true judge with justice and judgment that is right. God bless you. Thank you for listening. If you would love to hear more sermons like this one or find out more about our church, please visit us at villagebaptisthome.org. Until next time, take care and God bless.